So for the last week and a half, and it's probably felt like a month for you guys on YouTube, I have been trying to build a bird hatchery. And when I say bird hatchery, I mean a temperature controlled room that I can use to hatch out ducks and geese here on my poultry farm. And yeah, I'll probably hatch out a few weird chickens too. And mind you, this might seem like a simple task for most, but for me, who's kind of a crappy builder, still kind of a beginner, it has been a Herculean task. But the good news is, despite many failures, I've made a ton of progress, and we now have a structure that I'm starting to feel pretty gosh darn good about. <laughs> Like for example, I framed out all of the walls. I've even put up plywood for sheathing on the walls. I've trimmed out the exterior walls. And as I come inside here into the actual hatching room, you can even see that despite some struggles, I was able to build a ceiling. And what a mighty ceiling it actually is. But today marks the start of the part of the project that I'm arguably the most concerned and most insecure about. And that's that I gotta put insulation inside the studs so that I can heat this room up and have it stay warm enough for me to be able to hatch all the bird eggs. Ginny, I know you're getting very comfortable in this room, but unfortunately it's not gonna be accessible to cats and I'm gonna have to build a door still to keep you out. Even though you are very adorable and you've been a very helpful construction companion. Oh, you're such a sweetheart, you know that, Ginny? But as you can see here, I have my fiberglass insulation. I'm also wearing a good hooded sweatshirt. Oh, Ginny. <laughs> I'm also wearing a good hooded sweatshirt. I've got some gloves that I can use to keep my hands protected from the fiberglass. And I even promised my wife that I was gonna party like it was 2020 and wear this face mask here to avoid breathing in any of the fiberglass fibers. So let's get into it. Well, that was way easier than I thought it was gonna be. I think that took me about an hour to throw all of it up and insulate the entire room. I'm actually feeling pretty good about how it looks. It was actually really easy to do. And so I guess my fears and insecurities were very much unfounded. Now with all of the insulation up, I can throw on another layer of uh, plywood. I can have some more sheathing and essentially have the interior walls. We're making progress, you guys. So we have ourselves a dilemma, my friends. So it's come time for me to put a door in on the hatchery. As you can see inside here, I've actually completed in putting up all of the walls and finishing things off. We have a plywood floor. We have plywood and shiplap walls. I have all of this chaos here, filling in any little gaps and cracks that I have. I know that's gonna drive some people crazy, but I actually like it. It feels very, I don't know, organic and homey to me and feels like the exact type of vibe I want inside here. But yes, now it is time for me to put in the door. And this right here is our actual door that we're gonna use. It's a really good quality door. It's solid pine, it looks nice. I feel like it totally matches the aesthetic of what I've got going on in here. I actually scored this door from a friend of mine. They had purchased it for a home renovation, but it turned out to be the wrong size. And so they couldn't return it. And so they've had it for a while and so I got it extremely, extremely cheap. But with this beautiful door, there is but only one problem. Not exactly the right size. Pretty good sizable gaps on all sides around it. The problem is from the fact that I actually made my door size 28 by 80, which is, you know, fairly standard door size. This door happens to be 78 by 24. So it's actually a little bit smaller than I need. And so because of that, I'm gonna need to 
build like an additional portion of frame inside here so that it like sits nice and I can make a good air seal inside here for the door. You know, Ginny Barncat, this stuff is never easy. Now I suppose the first step in this process is to go to my lumber yard and see if I have the appropriate size pieces of lumber to make it all work. And by the way, if I haven't talked enough about this space, this is maybe one of my favorite parts about the new barn. I've got all these racks that let me keep my lumber nice and organized and in place. It is so much better than the chaos of my old system. And I'm pretty sure I have a four by four that I can use. Yep, here it is. So I think I can use this piece of four by four as a big part of how I solve this problem. Now this four by four is pressure treated, which means it could like stay outside and not rot. And like, I don't have to worry about it rotting. Like if I compared it to a standard piece of lumber like this, which would need to be treated if I wanted to leave it outside for long. Pressure treated lumber, as you can see, like, and you can actually see the difference in color. This stuff is chemically treated not to rot. This stuff is not. When you're building something inside, generally you don't use pressure treated lumber. But since I have this four x four on hand, I'm gonna use this rather than a standard piece and at least save myself a trip to the building supply store. All right, let's get to work. Usually when I'm doing these building projects, I'm listening to some sort of audiobook. For some reason, it really helps me focus in on work like this. What are you doing, Pablo? Just warming up by the light? So it required a little bit of finagling, but I think I've got everything fit pretty nicely here. So I'm gonna finish locking down the door and framing everything out and putting the trim back in place. So I think Pablo has figured out that the light is the warmest spot and Ginny is getting a little bit jealous. <laughs> Aren't you, Jin? Well, there's another light right here if you want to use it. <laughs> so I'm actually in the process of putting a lock in on this door so that the cats actually don't get inside because I am going to be housing baby birds inside of here occasionally and I don't want cats to get in there because they will eat those baby birds. So I've now successfully put the door in. There's one last hole that I have up here, but I've got a few things I've got to do. And now I've got to figure out how to mount these fans up there so that I have exhaust. But you'll just have to tune in next time to see what happens there. Thanks for watching everybody.